Hi guys, welcome to F1 2017. Been waiting to dive into this one. A uh, bit of a car racing fan myself, you know, I was into Project Cars, Forzas, etc. Not too keen on the F1 normally. However, this looked quite an interesting title. Uh, graphically, it looks quite nice. So I thought we'd go into all the options, have a look through them all, and also take a look at what graphics presets uh, affect VRAM and stuff like that, GPU usage, trying to gauge an idea, you know, if it'll work on a two gigabyte card or some of the older hardware, etc. Now, as you can see, the game's booted into um, the menu, which is on my ultra wide, and the menu itself doesn't fill the whole screen, okay? The game does. I quickly loaded in to do a benchmark, and the game does fill the, the ultra wide display. So uh, it's just the menu, a bit weird, but there you go. So if we crack straight on, we'll get into all the game options and uh, see what options we've got there for us to mess around with. So, as you can see, we're on keyboard mouse at the moment. I've uh, got my Xbox One controller and bump straight away, flick straight over, not a problem. So if we press Y for game options, and there's your settings. Okay, we've got customised controls, control scheme. Well, we got default, and oh, just default, and also look around, okay. Trigger rumble auto or on. We'll leave it on. Is there anything else we can mess with? There we go. What we got then? Keyboard preset one. We can edit that to have a look at it. Yeah, we go with that. And there we go. There's all your keyboard presets. Pretty much as you'd expect, really, isn't it? You pause the video, you know, if you want to have a look at these in detail. But you can predefine each one anyway. You can actually alter it, so uh, it's not really a problem. Uh, what else have we got? Controller preset one. Uh, we can edit that if we wish. And there we go. There's everything. Quite nicely laid out, as you'd expect a racing game, really. You know. And we've got another preset on there as well for Xbox controller. I will just note, I plugged in a DS4 and it didn't work on my system. Now, whether that's an indication it doesn't work at all, I don't know. On my system, it did not work. Uh, I'll value any input on that. If you've got this game and you've plugged in your DS4 and it does work, please let me know. My system, no, wasn't having any of it. Uh, so we've got another one there, predefined, haven't we? Yeah, as you'd expect. We've got brake and accelerate using the stick. That's the main difference instead of the triggers. Yeah. So going back, what we got next? Uh, audio settings. Now this game, I had a sneaky look. It does look like it caters for some good audio, which nowadays is getting increasingly rare. A lot of stuff is just stereo, and that'll be it. I mean, on your volume levels, as you can see, you can alter absolutely everything, which is nice. Yeah. Let's turn the music down a tad while I'm here. There we go. Um, and you also got this, Advanced Audio Settings. Now, I was quite happy to see this, I must admit. Enable subtitles on and off, that's simple enough. Subtitle language, um, I will quickly show you what options there is. There's English, French, Italian. There you go, I'll just flick through them all quickly for you. Like I say, feel free to pause it if you want to check that. There we go, turn those off again. And push to talk, yeah. Dynamic range full, limited, nighttime mode. There we go. Main output device. I'm on stereo speakers, as you can see. It recognizes my headset as stereo speakers. It's a USB headset, this particular one, so maybe that's it. It does work on 5.1. I have tried it. Now, it doesn't have Dolby Atmos, and from what I can gather, it doesn't have 7.1, but it does have 5.1 and stereo and also. Uh, three speaker setup, so two satellites and a sub seems to support that as well, uh, which is quite nice. So we've got a radio output device, you can have that output into somewhere else. Yeah, let's do the test there. Um, what we've got radio, verbosity, everything reduced, frequency, critical only, response only. Mm. And upshift tone, on or off. So, audio is a lot more than you would normally get, let's face it. Nice to see. What we got next? Uh, we'll leave graphics to a last because that's the biggie, really, isn't it? On screen display, you can have all this stuff and change everything, as you can see. Full map, mini map, the lot. Everything can be changed. So I'll just quickly scroll through all these. There you go. And what else have we got? 
UDP telemetry settings. There you go. There's everything you can mess with on that. And camera options. There you go. Mm, cockpit and field of view. Quite a lot there actually. It's quite nice. We'll leave all that as default at the moment. Uh, Toby eye tracking. Quite nice. There you go. On and off. Eye tracking sensitivity. Clean UI. And now we'll go to graphics. Graphics options. We have your basic video mode. Tells you what your card is. Maybe you've got two. Who knows? With this day and age with PCs. Uh, like I say, so default to my ultra wide setting. Does support 4K. Uh, in fact, will support 8K if you've got the uh, GPUs to run it. Um, I've had it on a 4K TV, supports that, no problem. Refresh rates, yeah, anything up to, you know, what your monitor's running. My monitor's currently set to 75, uh, 60 and auto, yeah. Display mode, the usual. Full screen, windowed, and window, there you go. Windowed, let me get this right. Windowed, full screen, and windowed full screen, okay. Aspect ratio, auto, 16 by 9, whoa. 16 x 10, 21 by 9, 4 by 3, 5 by 4, and we'll go back to auto, there we go, wow, 21 by 16 by 10, 21 by 9, mm, yeah, we'll leave it on auto, V-Sync on or off, uh, that is literally it, uh, obviously, if you've got it on, you have got these options, 1, 2, 3, or auto, I leave it off. Monitor is a free sync monitor, so you're not going to need that. Um, output monitor depends if you've got more than one plugged in at the moment. Obviously, when I plug my 4K TV in, you have got the option there of what display you want to use. It was a bit glitchy actually. Um, whenever I switched it back to monitor, it sort of scaled way bigger than my screen. I don't know. Could be a system system bug or it could be the game i don't know you'd have to try that one anti-aliasing now you've got taa on there at the moment temporal as it were checkerboard more of a word used with the consoles lately let's face it and off so there's no you know no base ones there as it were anastropic filtering as usual 16 8 4 2 and off hdr on and off You've got to have the card that supports it. My R9290X is getting very old now. Although my TV supports HDR, my card does not, so I was unable to test that, sadly. And there are, let's face it, depending on the TV, there are different levels of HDR. Budget HDR TVs, they don't, they're, just, they're not there. Okay, it's as simple as that. The cheapest budget TV really for HDR is sort of a £600 bracket for 42 it might say HDR on it, but um, the amount of intensity it can produce will not be there. So spend wisely if you're going to plug your computer into a TV for HDR. Don't just buy the cheapest one you can possibly find and expect it to be absolutely stunning because it doesn't work like that. Okay, have a look at the range, have a look at the brightnesses um, and see what it will actually sort of cover. Right, let's have a look. Confirm changes. Yeah, I suppose. What have I done? Right, what else have I got then? Uh, graphics. Advanced setup. Here we go. Detail preset high. Now that's what it's deemed my system capable of running. Obviously you want to stay over 60 frames per second all the time. So we're going to do uh, a test on each one to see what the usage is. We go up to ultra high lock. So there is a setting above, which is nice. And then you go medium, low, ultra low. Okay, so if we go ultra high, which isn't recommended for my system, yeah, I mean, I'd probably tweak a few bits to keep some of the textures on ultra, but um, VRAM usage, yeah. So we'll leave it on ultra. Yes, game has to be restarted. Uh, that's a pain in it, I hate that. Let's go advanced setup, put it back to high so we can just at least benchmark it, yeah. Okay. Right, so if we go down to, you've got your gamma look, your motion blur, your hood area, 
there we go peak knit adjustment hdr off there you go that's sort of touching on what i was on about the developers are aware there isn't an industry standard it's quite a few different hdrs hdr 10 seems to be the most common or popular one hopefully that will win uh, we shall see right benchmark mode then let's put it through its paces and see what high settings produce on ultra wide display obviously you're running more pixels than a normal 1080p display so uh, just bear that in mind if you've got a similar setup to myself Okay, I will just say I'm recording to a Samsung SSD. Okay, I'm using the Radeon Real Life software. Windows 10 Pro is installed on an Intel SSD, and the game is installed on a 7 to 100 speed normal hard drive. So let's see how this benchmark goes with the recording software and with MSI running as well. Okay. So track. Oh, I don't know any. Just leave it like that, I guess, and run the benchmark, and we'll do. You know low very low etc and see what the differences are now bearing in mind i am running the recording software so you're probably looking at maybe a two frames per second ish drop nothing major let's uh, see how we go in fact what i'll do i'll turn myself off while it does that Okay, so there we go. It used nearly 12 gigabytes of normal RAM. Uh, I've got 16 gigabytes on this system, running at 1833. Okay, so that's quite a lot of RAM. If you were running this on an 8 gigabyte system, you'd certainly have to look at a few bits and bobs. I did notice um, on the minimum FPS readout there, it starts to benchmark as the game is still loading its assets and stuff in before the screen actually appears so obviously that's going to drag your low-end benchmark right down it needs to really start benchmarking the minute it's finished loading hey ho anyway we've got an average fps there of 69 maximum of 84 while recording okay so nice and high i wonder if we can bump it a bit higher and put it on ultra let's see what it does when we go to the ultra settings ultra high settings i will just say when i first enabled these and did a quick reboot because you have to reboot to initialize them yeah uh, my system locked solid crashed immediately as soon as the game loaded up i couldn't alt tab out couldn't control alt delete nothing would close it 
Uh, I had to hold power, turn the system off while the fans and everything were running. Not a good thing to do. Whether or not that was linked to these ultra settings, I do not know because it was the preset above the one that was recommended for my system. Anyhow, high settings used about 3 gigabytes of VRAM and as we know, nearly 12 gigabytes of normal RAM. Okay, We averaged what, 70 sort of frames per second, I'd say, overall. Have a quick look back at that. Well, let's run the benchmark now on these ultra high settings. These are as high as it goes and um, see what sort of performance we get. Like I say, this is above the recommended settings for me. It may well blow the 4 gigabyte VRAM that I have available. But we'll give it a go, see what it looks like and um, see what's what. So benchmark mode. And like I say, I'll just turn record off for this bit. So an average of 51 frames per second. Now that has knocked it down under that 60 marker quite uh, quite heftily there, hasn't it? So it's obviously the preset, you know, it does work. It kept it above 60, which is what you really want on this type of game. I was having a, a look at it in detail and it sort of used 3.6 gigabytes of VRAM uh, while being run. However, to me, um, there were still some aspects that didn't quite look too sharp. So uh, we'll see. I mean, if we have a quick look at a, a diagonal, the anti-aliasing on it just seems very poor coverage, uh, such as. So I did a, a quick screen grab, and um, this is what was catching my eye in the game. I've sort of highlighted in red here. The AA coverage that I mentioned being a little bit low. If you look around the edge of the mirror there, uh, you've got some jaggies on show, top of the tent. The aerial in particular on the right there, even at a higher res, uh, later on when I try it at 4K, I could still see those in game. So I think the AA solution is a little bit weak on this game. You might want to think about force injecting that uh, using your own, you know, proprietary software that comes with your, your graphics card, whether it be AMD or GeForce. In my opinion, that caught my eye and distracted a bit from the actual, you know, game. Minor quirk, but there you go. Let's carry on with some uh, more footage anyway. So let's just see if you've got a two gigabyte uh, VRAM card, can we get in two gigabytes? We know that high is about three gigabytes and we know that very high is sort of 3.4 gigabytes of VRAM. 
um, you just need a faster card than I've got to hold that 60 frames per second. The game is not CPU intensive. I mean, if you were looking at that there, I'd got an average load of sort of 40% across all eight cores. It does scale nicely, which to me, that sort of says, yes, they had the consoles in mind because the little CPUs that the consoles have got there, they're eight cores. And this didn't leave any cores redundant. So it's certainly not CPU bound. It's just my graphics card showing its age. So if you are using a, I don't know, a GTX 1060, obviously 1070 and above, or maybe an RX 580 because they are a little bit faster than these old 290Xs. Uh, they're mainly built there for power consumption, you know, nice power consumption. Then yes, you may hold 60, um, you know, like I say with an RX 580 or a GTX 1060, you may hold 60 frames per second on the very high preset. But bear in mind, if you run an ultra wide like I am, you're running a lot more pixels than a normal 16 by 9 monitor. I would probably say if I wasn't recording and was on a normal 16 by 9 monitor, I could hold 60 frames per second. So there is that to bear in mind, okay? It's not um, a bad looking game. It's like I just mentioned, the AA coverage, a bit iffy. So anyway, can we get this below two gigabytes? Well, if we go all the way down to very low, we'll see what sort of memory that's using. Now we are gonna have to reload the game again. Hopefully no crashes this time, once thought so. So let's do that. No problems reloading the game back on the ultra low settings. So uh, here we go. You can see we are on ultra low. Okay, so we're still on uh, the same resolution, but we're on the ultra low settings. It doesn't go any lower than this unless you start dropping your res down. And it does go all the way down to 640 by 400. I've, uh, I've tried it. Let's have a look. Right then, shall we go? We'll do we'll do the benchmark again. Um, see what it comes up with, just to compare it to the high and ultra high that we've been doing. Uh, benchmark mode, uh, same track and everything. And like I say, I'll let it record without having to use the camera because it's an extra load. So we got an what we got maximum of 115 frames per second, minimum of 76. Again, it started doing the benchmark as it was still loading things in, so that's going to slow it down a lot. However, 
I mean, the obvious things were missing, the heat age from the engine, trackside detail was a lot lower. Um, the contact shadows were also missing. I noticed the tyres on the car that you actually drive when it's in third person, they looked like they were floating off the track. But it was about 2.1 gigabytes of VRAM. So I, I reckon that's sort of designed for two gigabyte cards. Uh, you should be okay with a two gigabyte card if you run it on very low on a 1080p display. It was probably popping above that slightly because of the extra pixels on the ultra wide, but nevertheless, not a problem. I will just quickly say, if you're a console gamer and you're watching this video and you're watching it because you're thinking about upgrading to PC, the reason we rattle on so much about FPS is because it quite literally is a game changer. It's the fluidity, the motion, it makes the game feel much nicer to play. A lot of console games are locked at 30 frames per second, especially for FPSs and racing games, and they've just not got the fluidity. Likewise, if your FPS is floating up and down, sort of 40s, 60s, um, it, it makes the game feel not as smooth, not as fluid. So that's why we're always rattling on about it. Okay, if you'd have to try it to appreciate it, there you go. I mean, if you play a 60 frames per second console game, you'll know it's smooth compared to a 30. Anyway, uh, let's try one more thing with this. You see, as a fellow PC gamer, I know what you're all thinking if you're playing a racing game. Those benchmarks are on a nice sunny track. Yes, it's got some extra cars on, but that's it. So what happens if we put this on ultra high and then add all the weather effects, including rain and stuff? Is it going to plummet the FPS so the benchmarks are a little bit sort of useless in a way? I know with games like Project Cars, when you put all the weather effects on, it absolutely hammers your FPS. So we've set it back to ultra high. We've reloaded the game. Now, bear in mind, this is a stage above where I should be with my system. I was averaging, what, sort of 54, 55 frames per second, I think it was. So let's go and put some weather on and uh, see what it runs like. Okay guys, so let's set this up for the wet weather racing then. Shall we go modern F1 cars or classics? I think we'll go modern. It's going to have probably more funky coloured designs on it for it to handle. Trying to stress it out as much as possible. So, what we got here? Hmm, what do you think? They all look rather, rather nice. What do we think? What's going to reflect water nicely? Probably a dark colour. And uh, let's go with that. I like blue. Who doesn't like blue? Okay. So let's pick some drivers and stuff then. Either will do. Hmm. Australia, China, Bahrain. Hmm, what about weather? How do we do weather? Okay. Here we go. Oh, here we go, guys. We've got all this. More options. I haven't actually played this game, I've been that busy looking for all the options and making this video that I've not actually started even playing it yet, so um, it's all new to me. So if we go across all these and go to weather, we're on dynamic, okay. What else have we got? Clear, light cloud, overcast, light rain, heavy rain, heavy rain, that should be taxing and also impossible to drive on, but still. Uh, yeah. Sunrise, morning, afternoon, sunset. Oh, we've got an advanced option. Let's have a look. It's loading something. What? We do not know. Should have installed this on an SSD. I tell you what, I say that so much now with games. When you think a game's not really going to take that long to load, and then it's it's just waiting. I think the age is coming where hard drives are done. Very soon, prices of SSDs are dropping all the time. Okay, what is this? We don't need this. Skip. Oh, look at the FPS quickly there, guys. Is it still loading? Yes, it is still loading. Okay. Uh, so the loading was obviously hampering things there. 35 FPS. Mm. Not a confidence filler, that. Let's 
So we got 43, 44. How do we change view? Oh, there we go. Yes, I was concentrating more there on how to change view than race. So we've got 50 FPS again. Um, I must admit the rain effect isn't quite as stunning as you'd expect, is it really? So we've got 3.4 gigabytes of VRAM again. We're holding 60 FPS easy enough there. And we've got some uh, contact shadows on now with it being on the ultra high. I noticed the volumetric lighting in the Australian track when it was running the benchmark. Can't really see anything on this particular track with the rain. So no, it doesn't seem to really hammer your FPS having the bad weather on, which is a nice surprise to be honest. So I suppose at that we should try it very quickly at 4K and see how we can get it to run. Very taxing. Well, let's swap over to that.
Well, and there we have it. Um, as you can see, 4K is quite taxing. Uh, you know, we were suddenly in the sort of low 30s for FPS. Um, as luck would have it, a new HDMI lead turned up for myself today. I run a 5 meter one to the TV, which yes, does nothing as you can imagine for it. Uh, and it was a sort of mediocre quality one. As soon as I plugged that 5 meter one in, the HDR uh, option did appear, which I find quite surprising on such an old card. Um, so obviously those tests were with it activated. Now, you will have noticed that I did a 1080p one as well there, just to, you know, give you an idea as to, you know, what what 1080p will give you on an FPS readout. Um, the new lead, which is a much higher quality cable, the 5 meter one that I ordered, like I say, works with the uh, HDR fantastically. Quite interesting that. So, um, and you've got the option there of scaling your your HDR up and down. You notice me setting the adjustment there to get it right. So with that i think we've covered most aspects on this video if this was any help at all to you whatsoever please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for future videos i'm always doing pc videos as well as uh gameplays console videos try and keep it all in the family you know i'm a gamer at heart and uh pc you know admittedly is my main platform but i do game on the consoles as well normally quite a lot so you know thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now